Number four then, from the 2007 Higher Maths paper two, a little transformed trig graph. Part A, just write down the values of the constants that define that graph. Well, that's quite easy for three marks. First part, because it'll just be three statements at one mark each, but I'll put down a little bit of work in. The multiplying number, the coefficient of it, would be the amplitude. I won't write down amplitude, but A would stand for the amplitude, how much it rises and falls, how much it goes up, and then how much it goes down from its axis of oscillation, I would call it. Well, if it goes from 1 to negative 3, that gives you twice the amplitude. So the amplitude would be half of the difference between them. 1 take away negative 3, just to put some working down. So that's a half of 4. So A must be 2. It's going up and down 2. B, also known as the frequency, how often this wavelength appears in 360 in the normal cycle. Well, this only takes 120 degrees to complete its cycle, so it's going quite fast. So its frequency is going to be, you could put down the working this way, the normal cycle would have been 360, it's done it in 120, which means it's got a frequency of 3. There would have been 3 wavelengths appearing by 360. Then C. C means the shift. It's happening outside of the bracket, after the sign's been evaluated, so it's affecting the answers. It's been shifted up or down. C stands for a vertical shift. And it has because it's not oscillating about the x-axis. You can see quite easily it's dropped down 1. You can just make that statement. But maybe I'll put it down this way. The top should have been at 2, but it's not. The top's at 1. You could use it any point you like. The top's at 1, but it should have been at 2. So if I do that subtraction, that means C is a drop of negative 1. It's dropped it all down 1. Well, there was the three marks. You didn't need to put any of that down, of course. You just needed to make the statements A is 2, B is 3, and C is negative 1. Part B. Determine the exact value of the x-coordinate of the point P, where this graph cuts the axis. It actually cuts the x-axis twice, so it's going to be the second one I'll be looking for. Well, it's on the x-axis. If you're on the x-axis... That means the y-coordinate is 0. That means this expression, which was 2 sine 3x degrees, minus 1 should equal 0. There's only one mention of x, so it's just get rid of all the bits and pieces. Get rid of the 1, get rid of the 2, get rid of the sine, get rid of the 3. Just dig your way down through them until eventually you've got x. So, I could have skipped a line there, but I didn't equals 1, that's taking the 1 across, it's subtracting so it adds. The sine of 3x is then going to be take the 2 across and divide, so that's a half, that's an exact value. It's the third time this has happened now in paper 2. This could have been a paper 1 question again. A half, so I know the answers for 3x. So 3x can be, the sine of 30 is a half, remember it happens twice, the sine of 30 is a half, so for a half I could have either, since it's positive, all sine tan cos, although I don't know why I'm using the analog cast diagram. We've actually got a graph, which is what it's meant to represent in the first place, till I've started, which means I'm either here or here. So I've either got 30 degrees there or 30 degrees there. So that would make it 30 or 150. So 3x is going to be 30, and here's the thing, I'll have to call that degrees, or 150 degrees which means that x is going to be dividing by 3 either 10 degrees or 50 degrees. And you can see from this, that must be the 10 and that's the 50. P is the second intersection, so I'll just put a note. P is the second intersection, which means, and at this point I've noticed I should have left the degrees in, that's a real pace when it's in degrees. If it says degrees, then x itself is just a number. P is the second intersection, which means x is the second one, which is just the 50 notice, because x was just a number. The degree sign was there already. A pest, I know.